Hey everybody, I want to talk about a product and platform that I absolutely love and our latest sponsor, Interseller, the prospecting and outreach platform of choice for recruiters and sellers. Whether you're doubling down on business development or recruiting talent, Interseller does all the heavy lifting of finding contact data, automating the email and follow-up process, and syncs all that rich data into 20 plus CRM and ATS platforms. Reach out now and get going on a two-week free trial and let them know you heard about it from Adam on the podcast today. Check out the link on the website. Appreciate it. Welcome to the podcast, where we introduce you to incredible humans who share their journeys with the mission to inspire you to harness your own inner tenacity to drive your life and career forward. And now, your host, Adam Posner. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast where I bring you the best and brightest from the world of business, talent, access, and entrepreneurship to help you harness your inner tenacity to drive your career forward. Folks, my guest today does not need any introduction, but I am thrilled to welcome Mr. 10X himself, Mr. Grant Cardone. And if you haven't checked out Grant on season two of Undercover Billionaire on Discovery, you must. He goes to a town he's never been to before with only 100 bucks in his pocket, no place to live. He shaves his head, no food, can't use his name. You get the gist here, no social media. And the challenge here is to build a million dollar business in 90 days. And if he doesn't, comes up short, he's got to pay that million. So Grant, typically my show is a long form show. We dig in, we go deep, but today we're lucky. We only have 15 minutes with you. So we're going to go fast and furious and 10 questions with Mr. 10X himself. You ready, sir? Let's do it, man. Let's do it. And Adam, I really appreciate you having me on the show. And and I, I hope to offer and provide value for, for the people out there that are struggling, or maybe you're trying to get to the next level, or you're doing great and you want to get to the next level. Struggle is a struggle. So that's what I was hoping to show on this, uh, on this show at Discovery Channel uh, on Discovery Plus. Well, that's awesome, man. Uh, yeah. Let's give people a little inside peek here. So on that first day of shooting, you had to be nervous, man, right? You're human. I mean, listen, you're Grant Cardone, but you're still a human being. Tell us what you were feeling that first day when they dropped you into Pueblo, Colorado, man. Well, dude, I was terrified. First of all, it was 15 degrees. I knew I had, like, you, you, start, you start, like, doing a lot of math quickly. Plane lands in Lamar, Pueblo, uh, Lamar, Colorado, which is two hours west of Pueblo. There's an old truck waiting there for me. It's 15 degrees, 3.15 in the afternoon. Sun's going to set in two and a half hours. I don't have a place to sleep, dude. Like, like I, I'm, I'm, I get off the plane and I had a duffel bag. You don't see this, but I get off the plane with a duffel bag and I run back to the plane and I start throwing shit in the duffel bag. You're taking like the little, like the little alcohol. But now you're taking like the soaps and everything. You're trying to get some stuff with you. No, no, I, 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 I should have taken soap. I didn't think about that. And I should have taken the alcohol off the plane, but because I needed it. But, but what I did take was I took a blanket that saved my ass. Smart. And I took the kind bars. Do you remember the kind yeah, bar you see? Me putting in the microwave? Now, those are the survival skills, man. Those are kicking in immediately, right? Yeah. When, right when you were getting off the plane. But think about that. You, what was it like? You know, that moment you stepped off the plane. You're like, shit. This is real, man. Like, I know it's a show. Yeah, and it, right. Like, this is a show and everything, but this is real. Like, yeah. When I got, when I got off the plane, my two pilots that are with me all the time. They, I was with them in 19 countries last year. They had terror in their eyes. I'd shaved my head. And I could see the fear. It, the fear hit me when I saw it in their eyes. And uh, Ryan Secco, who spends 300 days a year with me, I could tell he was scared. And the other dude, Don, uh, uh, God damn it, Donovan, Donovan, who's a North African, I thought he was going to start crying. Then I go get in the car. I go get in the car, dude. And it was like, oh, shit, this is real. Okay. I got three hours of sunlight or less. I have a full tank of gas. That's all I have. It's colder than shit. No phone. The heater in the car, the heater in the car doesn't work, and I don't know where I'm going. Like, 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 I'm like, this is real, and I have no place to sleep tonight. Damn, what was it like going from having everything to having nothing? Yeah, that 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 transition's pretty tough. It, that didn't hit me. That wouldn't hit me for another three days, and then for the next 87 days, it would haunt me every day. Uh, that was one of the hardest things was knowing I had a plane. I had a condo in Miami. It was warm on the beach. My family was, you know, I knew I could get to them. All I had to do was quit. That was the most difficult. My biggest liability in this entire thing was my lifestyle. Yeah, I mean, you, you're going from nothing. I mean, what was it? Was there like one or two things that you really missed having? Well, you didn't have your phone with you, right? 
Well, I had, I, you know, they, they basically scratch, they give me a, 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 a new right, phone. Right, you got a burner, right? So you couldn't have all yeah, your burn. contacts. I mean, emergency-wise, yeah. you could reach out to your family and all that, but. Yeah, but, but, but I still had my other phone in case of an emergency for my family or, you know, when we weren't shooting Undercover Billionaire, I could still do deals. Well, you're still running a business. A yeah, I got five companies I'm running and $2.3 billion worth of real estate. So I said, guys, this is fine. I'll never use this phone during the day to get help, which I never did. Um, Discovery tried to help me on some stuff. I'm like, I don't want your help. The deal is I don't want help. You're not producing a show here. Just follow me. There'll be plenty of shit to show here. Yeah, for sure. And for sure. stay out of my way. Let me do my deal. I'm a real business guy. I'm not just an advice guy. I'm running real companies. I can do this. And that's why I told Discovery, I said, look, I'm not going to do a million dollar business. This is going to be a $10 million business. It's going to be in 90 days. And, and I don't need your hundred bucks either, by the way. Just here, keep your fucking hundred, and I'll bet you a million dollars I can do it. And you don't see this in the show. They should have added this because it's just freaking swag, flex. I said, if I don't hit it, I'll pay you a million in cash, and I'll give every one of the crew a brand new car. Wow. Putting your money where your mouth is. That's something you always do, man. I mean, I love the flex, man. Sometimes, you know what? You got you to gotta show people what to work for, and I love it. So what do you appreciate? Let, 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 me, let me just say this. This is an added question, so we can do 11. But the reason I do that is not to flex on them. I do it for two reasons. One, it it puts me, it puts me in the in the compression. It's self determined compression. You're not pushing on me now. I'm pushing on me. So what I do, and that's really the power of 10x. Like, okay, the goal is a million. I'll make it 10 million. You want me to pay a million? I'll pay the million and plus let's do 20 cars. That would have cost me another million dollars. So. So um, I'm compressing myself, okay? Number two, I'm making it public. So I have all this, I have all this pressure from the public. And the third thing is, um, I got a story, dude. I got a badass story. So that any of these other undercover billionaires, they come behind me and think that they can pull some shit, I'm gonna set the bar so high, dude, that I scare people out of this shit. And when I come on your show, I got a big story to tell. Yeah, I, I love it, man. And what do you appreciate what do you, what do you appreciate most since after doing the show that maybe you didn't appreciate before? Maybe something you were maybe out of touch with, maybe something that you lost, you know, that connection to. But after doing the show, was there something that really got you back to your roots that you truly appreciate? Central heat. Central heat. <laughs> Beaches. You're a Miami guy. You got warm blood. Yeah. Uh, let's see, man. My kids, man. My kids running. My kid, my, my 11-year-old came and grabbed me yesterday morning and said, Papa, teach me everything you know. Uh, Scarlett came to me this morning and said, hey, brush my hair. Like that, I, I didn't have any of that for 84 days. Side bonus question here. Do you love being a girl dad? I have an eight and a half year old daughter and a two and a half year old son. I love being a girl dad, man. I just love being a dad, man. I, I, I don't know. Like, I don't think it would, if it was a boy, a girl, whatever. Yeah. Uh, in between. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I've never had boys. So I, I just love being a dad. I love being an inspiration to, to my kids. And, you know, what, one of the things that made the, the show e easy was that they were pulling for me the whole time. They never, ever said, come home. They said, stay. Even when I wanted to quit, they'd get on the phone. The eight-year-old, you got to stay, Papa. You got to show the world you don't need money and you don't need time. You can do anything, Papa. I believe in you. And you almost answered my next question. I mean, what's that key learning that you want your daughters to take away from your experience on this show? That you don't need time. You don't need money. And money's not the, the solution. You know, you have to, even if you have money, even if you have money, you still may need to make contacts. For life to be interesting, you have to make new contacts. And the only thing that I measured in the first two weeks that I was in Pueblo was the number of contacts I could make, quality contacts. Big and difference. so that's what I hope my kids learn. Your, your, life, your life is only as good as the people in it. To the quality, the quality of the people will determine the quality of your life. Yeah, I mean, I built everything on relationships, and, that, and that's what I preach, man. Switching it up a little bit, what specific thing do you think the people that know you well, right? What do you think that they really don't know about you? The people that think they know Grant, you know, listen, man, you're a public figure. You're everywhere. Everyone thinks they know Grant Cardone. But what do they not know about you that you want them to know? Well, look, you know, I don't know why you're asking me that question. Is it because I get so much heat? Yeah, well, we'll get to that the heat part in a minute. But like, I mean, the Grant Cardone, like you, you have your, your, your public persona. 
you know, you have the grant that, that people see there. But is there like one of those misnomers where people may think something about you, but it's, you know, not really true? Yeah, yeah. Look, the people that look, I talk about money all the time because money's important. So people that only hear the first line are like, oh, he's a, he's a money grabber. And I am, by the way. Let me just say that. Like, I want money. I want a lot of money. Cash flow. Uh, you know, the opening of the show is I make money. I make a lot of money. That was my line, right? So, like, I, I you know, I think you're trying. You used to work for Vaynerchuk. He, 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 he wants to say that he money's not his thing. Okay, well, good. So, give me all your damn money, Gary. Well, he wants like, to buy the jets, right? He needs money for that. Bro, you're going to need a lot of money for that. Like, like some point you got to monetize. So the point is, when you hear, there, there's two people that don't like Grant Cardone. People that don't know me and people that have been kick, kicked out of the empire. That's it. So people that don't know me maybe heard about me. So you can't not like me if you hadn't heard about me. So, so you know, what would I like people to know? I mean, you know, but I'm not going to do this. Like, I, I'm not going to tell people, look, I'm so generous. Like I gave thirty-five million dollars away in December to charities. Show, show don't tell. Yeah. So, you know, I love people, man. I love people. Like, if you took everything away from me and all I had was helping people, I'd still be the richest guy I know. I love that. That's true. That's real, man. And flipping it around, one of the things that I love that you say is never waste a hater. Their fuel. I mean, so what do you say to them, right? They talk shit about you. They talk about the lawsuits. They talk stuff about the smack about the church and all this other stuff there. Like, what do you say to them? How does this drive you forward? I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Simple as that. Thank you, guys. There's nobody that promotes me better than a hater. They're the best, best gift I have been given is the haters, okay? Uh, I watched a guy. I watched two guys that have been kicked kicked out of the the my my, my world uh, because of the way they acted. They did an <clears throat> interview, a one hour interview for forty five minutes. They talked shit about me. Thank you. Cannot thank you enough. I cannot buy that ad time. Yeah. Nobody will let you buy forty five minutes of ad time. People just sat there and watched them fucking argue about Grant Cardone, Grant this, Grant that. He's wrong about this. He's wrong about it. But the whole time, people that what they don't understand, man, is haters. Haters, number one, are a perverted form of admiration. Yeah. I don't want to stop it. I don't want to block it. It is admiration. It is a form of admiration and attention. And I could never pay for that. So if they're willing to invest their time and their energy and their creativity in hating on me while they're doing that, by the way, they're not creating anything. And all they're doing is leaving little nuggets about Grant. And, uh, you know, look, I, the other thing is I've never known a successful person on this planet from Jesus to Gandhi to King to Kennedy to Barack to Trump that wasn't hated. Yeah, totally. So bring it on, ding dong. Let's go, I man. It. I love it. I love it, man. So switching it up a little bit, you and your wife, Elena, have been married for 17 years. What's Grant Cardone's golden secret to a successful marriage? Man, I, I, I hate giving marriage advice because, you know, I mean, yeah, you, you know, it's just marriage is tough, man. It's a difficult thing. Work. And uh, because people change, right? Just being with myself is tough. And then you add another person, oh my God. And then you start adding people's dreams and then you start adding aging and you start adding the kids and you start adding the kids aging and the kids changing and you know, the pressures and then people saying things and you know, people in your lives. Like we got a big company, you know, fairly big company here. And, and then you get the haters dropping stuff. You know, the bankruptcy video. I'm sure you saw the bankruptcy video. My wife hated me for three or four days because of that video. Like, like that video freaked her out because people were hammering her. And, you know, I do things that, that she, she's a different person than I am. And I'm very abrasive and she's very nice. And you also want to protect her. I mean, as much as a public figure you are, it's still your wife and that you want to, you want to insulate her and protect her in, in some capacity. Yeah, and but but she has a different. I mean, the point I'm making right now, she has a different tolerance for the heat than I do. Like I like it. I like a good fight, right? right? She doesn't want that. And so, so you got two people. No matter how much you are on the same page, you got two people like have different tolerance levels. Um, 
I'm, I'm extremely forgiving. When, when people betray me, the door's still open. Just fix your shit. Make good on what you would said or did wrong. Make amends and clean it up. She, she's like, uh-uh, door's closed forever. So it's just a different tolerance level of how people handle and deal with things. And, it, and that's what makes, you know, mar- marriage is just a tough thing. Yeah. How, how we've done it for 17 years, you know, uh, we do our best to get on the same page with finances, the kids, and then we discern who's in charge of what. And she gets to be wrong on those things that she's in charge of. And I get to be wrong about the things I'm in charge of. Been, and, we, and we hopefully support each other. It's communication. I mean, I've been married 11 years. I think I've won one argument, Grant. My wife's an, a commercial real estate attorney, side note. And I've won one argument. A uh, <laughs> couple more questions. We'll wrap it up here. Which cat do you like more, cash or flow? Cash, probably. <laughs> Single best piece of advice you've ever received that you take action on every single day of your life? God, my mom, my mom told me uh, the best investment you would ever make. This is the best piece of advice. Best investment you can ever make is in yourself. My uncle told me uh, you need to start learning how to you get money to make money. And um, somebody, somebody told me or somewhere I got do the hardest thing first. I don't know where I got that last piece from, but I do the hardest shit. The most co- uncomfortable thing I, I, I have in a day, I try to do the first thing of the day. That's smart. That's good advice. And last but not least, Grant, looking back at your life from your childhood early on, you know, losing your father when you were young, the early years when you were unemployed, addicted, and you had to reach down and pull down, pull up, grab that tenacity, something you have more than almost anyone that I've ever seen on this freaking planet. And on the other side of it, when you look back and you want to show gratitude for everything you have, this empire, this life that you created, when you're sitting high and pretty at 51,000 feet on that G5 and you want to show gratitude, Grant Cardone, what is your North Star? What is your compass in life? People, man, to help people. You know, I wanted, I wanted when I was lost, I was 15 years old and I started using drugs and I would, I would become addicted to drugs uh, for the next 10 years. I wanted somebody to help me. And, and, and I was desperate, man. I was desperate for somebody to reach out and grab me and say, come here. And nobody did. Um, and I didn't really know how to ask for help. Um, and, and I just, you know, I, somewhere along the line, in all the confusion and the, the addiction and the lostness, I told myself that one day if I figured out how to get myself out of the shit, and if I could then, once I got out of the shit, become a success, I would help other people. So that's my North Star, man. Can I help a lot of people? I love it, man. Grant Cardone, thank you for spending time with us. Everyone catch Grant Cardone on season two of Undercover Billionaire. Check out more at grantcardone.com. You know where to find us at thepodcast.com. For more, take care of each other. Stay six feet apart. Wash your hands. And catch us next week for another great episode of The Podcast. Wisdom is forever. But for us, it's time to go. Thank you for joining us. Luckily, we'll be back with our next episode soon, jam-packed with more incredible humans. Thank you for listening, subscribing, and sharing. To join the conversation, search The Pausecast on LinkedIn. And to catch up on past episodes and more info, please visit www.thepausecast.com. <laughs>